what is an atomic desktop? This is something that's kind of new and I love it because there's immutable and then you have regular Linux systems. And most people, when they think of Linux, especially newcomers, they think, oh, you're going to break stuff. Well, the Steam Deck has proven that there's some stuff in Linux you just really can't break. When it comes to the Steam Deck, I've updated that I don't know how many times and it just works. It's like the Todd Howard of, of Linux. It's great. It just works. Actually, that's probably not a good analogy. <laughs> but it's one of the few distros that I have used and I have really never had an issue with it. And then I started trying Bazite. And Bazite is a really fun distro and it's an atomic desktop. And what that means is it's not necessarily immutable, but it's also not your traditional Linux desktop. So it's a lot harder to break because it's based off of images. So let's break down how exactly uh, Linux atomic desktops work. We'll get on the desktop here and try it out a little bit and see what you think and uh, kind of show you the update process because it's pretty wild. I've been on this on my main system with like PCI pass through a whole bunch of different stuff through everything in the kitchen sink at it. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So how's this different from your traditional Linux desktop? That's the big thing, right? It is transactional updates, meaning the updates don't get applied directly to your system. They get applied to a new image. And that image will be another layer basically that you can point to. So let's say something happens that's bad on your updates, then you could easily revert back to your old one my, very easily. It just select it on startup and bam, you're you're right back to where you were even with a bad update. It also uses something called OS tree to kind of make this possible. And OS tree is really interesting because your base system really doesn't change, but you can do what's called layering where you can add packages on top of that base system to kind of uh, manipulate or get certain things installed on the system that maybe you want. And yeah, it, it's awesome. Instead of just doing containers for everything, which it is heavily emphasized that you do containers on an atomic desktop, but let's say there's something you need to add to the base system, you can layer it in using OS tree. The downside to doing that is these types of installs are big, bigger than Windows, believe it or not. The, the Bazite 40 install is a whopping 7.5 gigs which is kind of wild. Uh, so you, they're not small or conserve very much space. So be prepared for that. But with as cheap as storage is today, I think it's a good sacrifice. Now there's a ton of videos out there going over Flatpak and other installs. But if you open up the Discover store for using KDE, the GNOME store, if you're using GNOME, whatever spin you're using, you can easily install a lot of different Flatpaks, whether it's like GIMP or Firefox or whatever browser you're using, you got a lot of different uh, applications to update and use in here for flat packs. But it goes further than that. Another cool way is App Image, which I've always used App Image Installer. But there's one thing that's really cool that Bazite comes with. And frankly, on my Arch install, I'm going to start using Gear Lever. And Gear Lever is an App Image host that basically can grab all your app images. And then when you launch them, I, I use a cursor a editor a lot, which is an app image. And it'll sit there and when it updates, it'll just go ahead and grab that update and then reinstall much cleaner, way better to use this to manage app images as well. So you have Flatpak app image, but there's also DistroBox, which I thought was super interesting. Using its terminal, which this is PTY, XIS, which I've used a bunch, you have a bunch of cool different ways and you can install packages with DistroBox rather than layer them, which we'll get into layering here in a second, but you can just go, you just DistroBox, and then you can select which kind of container you want to make. I'm going to make an arch layer just so we have access to the AUR. It goes and grabs basically arch and installs it on your machine so then you can do it. Now, I think the base one from Bazite does install an AUR helper called Paru and Paru can install a ton of different applications and then we can integrate those apps directly into our system. I was using this extensively with like Synergy and a couple other things that I needed that weren't on this system. Now to enter the distro box, we could just do distro box, enter Bazite Arch. 
So now that we're in here, we can actually do searches using the AUR. Let's say I wanted to grab something obscure like a Thorium browser. I know that's not in the Flatpak repos and I'd have to install it. We can actually just grab it directly from the AUR. So we'll just grab Thorium browser bin, paste that in and install it. Now, this isn't exclusive to Bazite either. Like you can install DistroBox on any distro. So let's say you're on Debian and you're like, man, I really missed this AUR package. You can utilize this. When you're switching distributions and looking at atomic desktops or whatever it is, remember, pick out the things that you like. And then whenever you move to the distro that you enjoy, you can also pull things with you. And that's the whole purpose of looking and exploring a lot of this stuff. It's just finding the stuff that I like because usually I'm either on Debian or Arch and that's it. That's usually the two I love to main. But after maining Bazite for a couple weeks, I have some great, great things I've learned from it. And DistroBox was definitely one of them. So was GearLever. But also we do need to address what happened at the end here because uh, it did not quite go uh, exactly to plan. All right, with Thorium Browser installed, we can just type Thorium Browser and we could launch it directly from in here and we'd have the browser. But obviously we don't wanna open this up through our terminal and do it every single time. So probably the easiest way to do this would be to export that into our start menu and just use it from here. Because if you look under internet, all we have is Firefox. So to install it, this is just kind of like the export command. We're just gonna go distro box export. And then we're gonna just type Thorium browser. Uh, make sure we do a dash dash app because it's an application that's gonna go in our start menu. Now let's say we're uh, exporting like BTOP or some binary file, you'd go dash dash bin and then just put the absolute path to the bin using this. So if it's not like a GUI application, you would use the bin instead of the app. So Thorium browser and it's exported. It will appear in your applications list in a few seconds. So let's exit this and then pull up our start menu, go back to internet. Did it properly do it? Oh, look at that, Thorium browser. And there it is, very, very snappy. I haven't seen any performance loss from this either. So I thought that was a pretty cool containerization. So. Uh, just getting, quickly going over containerization here, I talked about the mutable file system, what you can write to it, but then let's say there's something that, hey, we need this directly on the system. Well, that's when you can do layering. Now, layering uses the RPM OS tree. So we're gonna just come onto here and go RPM OS tree, and you can go status to get the status of the tree. And if you wanna layer, let's say, add something specifically to the actual install, you can layer it in. I, I've done layers for like X11 on Fedora 30, which I don't recommend, but you can do it because it's part of the system and you're gonna need access to it. Just know anything you install through an, OP, uh, an OS tree layer, it will have to upgrade that and then also install and upgrade your layers independently. So your install and upgrade times do drastically increase the more layers you add. So don't add a ton of layers. This is a last result, but also really a neat thing to do. Now, another cool thing is, well, let's say an update blows up your Bazite instance or an, uh, any atomic desktop you can actually use the rollback feature in OS tree. So you can actually type rollback and you could actually roll this back to the first deployment. Now it's actually gonna move and roll back our deployment back one version before any updates, which is kind of cool. So whenever we reboot, it will roll it back. Now while this updates, because it's actually rolling back to the install, I did have this blow up on me in an update and I did it all on a live stream. I'll, I'll put a link to the article to here where I've done three huge installs using Bazite as my main system. Initially I did it and then I did PSI or PCI pass through using Bazite. And then on top of that, uh, I did a bunch of different layering. I even layered Xorg on top of Fedora 40 since Fedora 40 removes XORD completely, and I wanted uh, KDE with XORD. And it was really kind of interesting seeing all these different layers, it, it really changed the game for me. And I was like, this is really cool. And when it broke, it was very easy to roll back with just a simple selection in their uh, 
the the grub and then I could just go right on the terminal and just do a RPM dash OS tree rollback, or you can list the status of all the different versions. So very easy to recover your system, which I thought was great and roll back and using the containerization. Now, obviously I'm not using this anymore for my main system. I just wanted to show these features because atomic desktops, I think is really going to be great for the average user out there that wants a really stable experience. And if they do encounter problems, it'll be very easy to roll back into a good version. So to showcase these three things too, this is when I actually loaded it up on Titus Tech Talk. I did this all live because I wanted to not sugarcoat anything and I can't explain everything in like a 10 minute breakdown, but I wanted to give you the general overview of atomic desktops, but actually using it for my main PC, totally applicable. And I was able to do it for oh, several weeks now, nine days ago, I, uh, published this, but I actually had been on it for several days before this was published. And we rolled it up directly on the main PC. And then we went through and did a bunch of pass through adding that functionality in so I could easily uh, switch over to like a Windows instance and be, you know, doing Windows videos and having full GPU and native hardware sitting there, whether it's an NVMe drive and other things, all that was possible with layering and also, uh, modifying like ETC and, and using you just, which was really an interesting package manager. And, and then, uh, I did an update the day of Fedora 40 being released on Bazite. And yeah, that's, that's basically me in a live stream doing the update and then everything breaking, uh, which was interesting. I, I looked through and I was like, well, initially I thought switching from Xorg to Wayland did the cause of it. And then come to find out it was KDE 6, which KDE 6 I've had a lot of issues with from a fresh install. This was an actual update from 5. KDE 5 was working fine. Upgraded to 6. Everything was messed up. Uh, after troubleshooting it for an hour or two on this stream, we found out that the update, uh, what broke was actually the cache folder in my system. So my cache, when I updated KDE 6, apparently KDE 6 doesn't flush the old KDE 5 cache or something with that image and how it was updated, I don't know. But as soon as I deleted the cache, it was able to actually properly get to the desktop where before it would just throw up a bunch of error messages. And I was like, that's interesting. But we also showed a rollback in this video. We showed layering, a bunch of different things with these three going over atomic desktops. And it was really fun. And I could see how this could be the future. Uh, I just don't like Fedora as a base. I think it's just not a great uh, distro. It's it's okay, but at the end of the day, they make a lot of decisions I don't particularly like. I still like using Xorg. I still like using some other uh, functionality that you know they just arbitrarily just say, hey, we're cutting off all support for that. We're forcing everybody to use this. And I don't like those decisions. So I like to stick to community run distro, specifically Arch and Debian. Those two are that. If you want really stable experience, Debian. If you really want the bleeding edge with all the new packages, you want Arch. And I feel like those are the two distros and I'm waiting for more to kind of pop up in there and maybe a, a take on atomic desktops enters one of these two realms, which is pretty much there. I know vanilla OS and the Debian realms kind of there. And then we have a few players uh, like Nix OS style installs happening on Arch. So this is a really kind of cutting edge type thing happening with atomic desktops. And, and frankly, a, a lot of taking what works with immutable and then also having some customizability while not breaking your system is kind of where I see Linux desktop shipping shifting to. And I really love it. I really do love it. I know some of this is really aggravating see, seeing all these things right as they come out. Of course, there's going to be bugs, but I have immensely enjoyed my time with Bazite. I don't want to say, hey, the Bazite's a bad distro or anything. I still have it as one of the best gaming distros on Linux. It's what I recommend because there's one game, even on Arch, I still can't quite play. And even when I load up the, the Helldivers 2 in my Windows PCI pass-through instance, it still bombs out because of an in-protect anti-cheat. For whatever reason, it will play just fine on Bazite. Every other distro I've tried, it won't play. 
it'll just hit in protect and then just shut down. So whatever Bazite's doing there, it works really well. I'm, I have a hunch that if I tried Nabara, it probably would work as well because they're doing some customizations and I thought that would be kind of interesting. So uh, if you want to check out these streams again, check out Titus Tech Talk. And I also kind of overviewed all of Atomic Desktops specifically on ChrisTitus.com take a deeper dive. And honestly, if you want to make your own, you can look up Universal Blue and it's still all based on Fedora, but a really neat project. And I love seeing new stuff like this enter this space. And it's not just a the same old, same old. As much as sometimes it breaks on me or something happens, I love the, the shift towards these types of systems, which are much more user-friendly than your traditional Linux distribution. And I think that's where we're headed. Uh, and I'm loading up actually a Bazite on my Steam Deck inside because I still love that. And uh, seeing these types of distributions, I, I feel really good uh, that average day users can use them without breaking them because they're not doing crazy stuff like I do. But I like to really put it through the motions and try to break it and understand and fix it and then kind of gain the knowledge from that. So with that, let me know your thoughts on Atomic Desktops down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.